subject of today's video is a Zondervan Bible in the New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition, a new translation. I'll show you the packing material. It's not actually a box, it's more of a slipcase. And let you pause and read the information here if you'd like. Essentially it has a sewn binding. It includes the Apocrypha. It has no references. Print size is about 10 points. There is no concordance. There are maps. We'll take a look at all of that as we proceed. This Bible is 9 and 11 sixteenths of an inch tall, 6 and 3 quarters inches wide, and it's 1.21 inches thick, measured at the spine. And as you see, it has gold page edges. Fairly nicely done. And two ribbon markers. To give you a sense for dimensions, I have another, a number of other New Revised Standard Version Bibles here. This is the R.L. Allen NRSV 1. And it's similar in dimensions, not quite as wide in the pages. This is the older New Revised Standard Version from 1989, as will all of these be. Here we have the uh, Oxford New, uh, the New Oxford Annotated Bible, fifth edition. It's a study Bible, much thicker book. I tend to compare the fonts in these as well. Here we have the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. I believe this is. Uh, from Catholic Bible Press to thicker book. And finally, here's a smaller edition. This is a Cambridge NRSV, again the 1989 edition with the Apocrypha. All of these include the Apocrypha to a certain extent. The Catholic edition, of course, contains fewer books than the others. All right, uh, so we've given the dimensions. Let's open it up and look at the format of the page. We have text in two columns. Each of these columns is about 64 millimeters wide. I count about 46 characters on a line with a lot of characters, a closely packed line. The, and there are as many as uh, 56 lines of text on a page. You have fewer than that here because you have a note in the in the bottom of the column. Page dimensions 236 millimeters tall, 159 millimeters wide. That's 9.3 inches tall and six and a quarter inches wide. The margins I'm measuring from this line to the edge. Margin at the top measures between 10 and 12 millimeters. The inner margin can be as much as 15 millimeters. The outer margin here is 10 to 12 millimeters and at the bottom from a descender in the text or the notes to the edge of the page is 9 to 11 millimeters. Those of you who aren't familiar with millimeters and are familiar with inches, there are 25.4 millimeters in an inch. The text is line matched. That means the text on this side of the page and the text on the other side of the page, the lines are aligned. They, uh, they match up. So you don't have printing from the other side of the page coming into this page in between the lines. The words of Christ in this edition are in black ink. That's the way I prefer it. And if you want to know why, I did a video a few months ago explaining why I prefer black ink for the words of Christ. The text is not self-pronouncing as it typically was in many older King James Version editions. More modern translations tend not to do that. But in the Old Testament, unlike, say, the Legacy Standard Bible or the Jerusalem Bible, which uh, use Yahweh or the American Standard Version which uses Jehovah you will find the Lord 
Lord in all capitals in the Old Testament. There are headings in the text. These headings are in all caps. It's about a 10 point font. It does not reference similar passages. Some of you will remember the old 1984 NIV, many editions of that gave you parallel passages at the headings. Uh, this edition does not. There are page bottom notes. They're in the lower right hand portion of each page. And those are printed in an 8.5 to 9 point font. And they are concerned with the meaning of the text. So they give you insight into the uh, translation issues and into textual variations. Books of the Bible begin on a fresh page. So you see when you get to the end of 1st John, you come to 2nd John, 3rd John begins on a fresh page, as does Jude and the Apocalypse. The uh, book title is in red, the outside top of the page, and the page contents are there as well. So on this page, the first full verse is Wisdom chapter 17, verse 3, and the page number is aligned right along beside it. Verse numbers are contained within the paragraphs. Here we have a poetic section, so we don't have paragraphs, but if I move to portion of the Bible formatted that way, you'll see that they're embedded here in the paragraphs. They're printed in the somewhat small characters, so they're not very easy to find. Chapter numbers are large and red and somewhat bold. The print is black and sharp, and I consider it uh, on the bold side as well. I do like that font. There is some print uh, non-uniformity, but it's very rare in this edition, and when you do find it, it is mild. So here's an example. This page 847 is relatively dark, and here's a somewhat lighter page, page 845. I'm not sure how well that's showing up in your screen, but to my eye, this has a bit more ink applied than that. The font in the text, the capitals, when I compare them to Times New Roman, they're about 10 points high. The lowercase letters strike me as being closer to 10.5 points. The font is advertised as 10 points. The line height, that is the distance from baseline to baseline, is 3.71 millimeters. That's 10.5 points. So that uh, I think is appropriate. It uh, gives you room, white space between the lines. You'll notice that there's not much of a conflict between a descender and an ascender here. White space separates the line, which uh, makes for a more pleasant reading experience. The paper has a sheet thickness of 38.8 micrometers. I'm, on the basis of that, I estimate the paper weight at 35.5 GSM. The advertised paper weight is 36 G GSM. There is a sheen on the surface. I think you can see it through there, which makes it important to watch that angle between the lamp, the page, and the eye as you read the volume. The, the color of the paper is very nearly white. There's a very slight cream tinge to it. There is show through, which I do not find distracting. You can read through the paper. I'll show you an example of that. We move here to Psalm 17. You'll be able to see some words through the page here, for instance. So that says, the Lord lives. Then you can see the word rock here. We look at the line, the Lord lives, blessed be my rock. So, there is some show through, but I do not find it distracting. As we come to the end of the book of Revelation, we find a blank page, and then we have eight lined notes pages. The spacing here between the lines is 6.6 .6 millimeters. 
as I mentioned, there's no concordance, no references in this volume. We have a note regarding the type, and it is uh, 2K Denmark is responsible for this particular comfort print type. We have color maps. There's seven of them on eight pages. Paper is glossy. The maps do not go into the gutter. After the maps, you come to the paper liner. So this is a paste off construction with a paper liner. We have brown head and tail bands. It's not hard to see. It's sort of a dark brown. Two ribbon markers. One gold, one brown. The uh, ribbon markers are 33 centimeters long, or about 13 inches long. They're 6 millimeters wide, so they're not very, very wide. The binding is sewn and lies open in Genesis. So I'll show you that. So Genesis 17 on the left. The Old Testament, Genesis 1. Press it down a little bit and it holds open. If we look between pages 14 and 15, we'll see the thread in the gutter. And so it's down in there. This way you can verify that the binding is sewn. There is a slight drop off of the text towards the gutter, but it is slight. And I don't think it's going to cause you much difficulty. You can see the roll off here and the roll off there, but there's a decently wide inner margin. And I don't think that's especially prob problematic in this particular edition. Here's a look at the brown leather soft cover. You can see that there is a line of stitching around the edge. And we mentioned the gold page edges earlier. If we move to the front of the volume, we see that there's a presentation page here on the inner liner. We have a half leaf and a title page published by Zondervan. Here is the copyright page. And so this is the first printing in 2022, printed in China. Table of contents. We have uh, the Protestant Jewish Old Testament, the Deuterocanonical slash Apocryphal books. Sometimes people criticize me for using the term apocryphal with respect to these books. However, I am reading what the print says here. New Testament, the 27 books there. We have a note to the reader, the preface to the updated edition, abbreviations used in this updated edition, three pages of those, and then we come to the Old Testament. The sections are numbered continuously, so if we find the Apocryphal section in between the Old and the New Testaments, and the numbering continues. So this book was not uh, modified from a design that excluded the Apocryphal books. The editors had it in mind to include them from the beginning, 8, 7, 16 on the left. And then when we see numbers again, we're at 820 here. I want to show you that again since I seem to have clipped it off. 816 here. And 820. And then we'll move deeper in. Come to the New Testament. 4th Maccabees is on 1064. And Matthew 25 is on 1068. Now I will just point out a few lines here from the preface. 
approximately 12,000 substantive edits were made and 20,000 total changes, including alterations in grammar and punctuation. One of the things I've noticed is that they've eliminated a number of commas and they've replaced a number of semicolons with commas. The committee's mandate primarily focused on two types of revisions, text critical and philological. Uh, it's not a new translation. Some stylistic improvements have been made, but only where the translation was awkward, unclear, or inaccurate. Other changes involve matters of consistency, grammar, and punctuation, and general improvements that render the translation and notes more consistent and uniform. The NRSV uses double brackets in the Old Testament in the same way the new Revised Standard Version of 1989 did in the New Testament. They enclose passages that are now regarded to be later additions to the text, but that have been retained because of their evident antiquity and their importance in the textual tradition. So they regard what they're using as a base as an improved Masoretic text. We go down next to look at the Apocrypha what they say there about their textual basis. They say a number of changes have been made. There's no single critical edition. Uh, for most of the books, they've used uh, Rolf's for several books. The Gottingen Septuagint were used. The NETS also served as a resource. For the book of Tobit, the NRSV updated the NRSV relied on the shorter Greek manuscript tradition. The updated edition translated the longer Greek tradition while taking the Qumran manuscripts and other ancient witnesses into account. For the three editions to Daniel, they continued to use the Greek version attributed to Theodosian. For Ecclesiasticus, they followed the Greek text of Joseph Ziegler in general but they gave particular consideration to the earliest Hebrew manuscripts from the Dead Sea region and made occasional recourse to the Syriac. And they make additional comments here about other books. I'll let you pause this and read this if you're interested. For the New Testament, the team used the UBS 5, the 2010 edition of SBL, and for Acts and the Catholic Epistles, they used the Edidio Critica Maior, 2013-2017. Um, double brackets are used to enclose a few passages that are generally regarded to be later editions, but have been retained because of their antiquity and importance. And they believe that a careful reader will notice, in general, a more generous use of notes or alternative readings. Under the topic of philological revisions, they say that they took special care not to use terms in ways that are historically or theologically anachronistic, though anachronism is unavoidable. They continue and improve the effort to eliminate masculine-oriented language when it can be done without altering passages that reflect the historical situation of ancient patriarchal culture. They note that only occasionally has the pronoun he or him or other gendered language been retained in passages where the references may have been to a woman as well as to a man, for example in several legal texts in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. In the final paragraph they tell us that in the future uh, new translations may be necessary. Here is another close-up look at the font, preliminary to our doing font comparisons. I will bring up each of those Bibles you saw at the beginning of the video that contained the 1989 New Revised Standard Version. On the left you see the Cambridge New Revised Standard Version reference edition with Apocrypha. Now on the left is the New Revised Standard Version Illustrated Catholic Bible. On the left now is the new Oxford Annotated Bible, 5th edition. And finally on the left you see the R.L. Allen New Revised Standard Version number 1 in RSV1. At this point I'd like to show you a few charts about the updated edition as a translation. This uh, particular video has been delayed because I've been building charts to compare the updated edition to the original. And I've determined that I have so many charts to complete that uh, it's going to take me a while to finish that. 
So to avoid delaying this full review video, I've split them into two different videos. So I'll just say a few words about the translation here, starting with my continuum chart. Here you see that the updated edition scored slightly more literal than the 1989 original New Revised Standard Version. In terms of deviations or departures from the Masoretic text, the 89 and the 2021, the updated edition of the New Revised Standard Version, score the same. But actually, as you'll see in the later video, they differ in eight points. For those points, the New Revised Standard Version updated edition moves toward the Masoretic text, and in four of those cases, it moves away from it. So they aren't exactly the same, even though they score the same. I'll show you next my quad charts. These are charts that are explained in a video that I did some time ago, titled something like a four-dimensional approach to New Testament textual criticism or something along those lines. Um, we'll start with the Nestle Elan Robinson Pierpont chart. These are different Greek New Testaments and the, the scatter plot shows you for each translation represented by a diamond how much it agrees with each of the two translations on the axes. So the updated edition agrees with Nestle Elan 28th edition 74.5% of the time and with the Robinson Pierpont Greek New Testament which is essentially the majority text it agrees with that 39.9% of the time. You'll see it's a little bit lower and slightly to the left of the 1989 New Revised Standard Version. The next chart shows Nestle Land again on the y-axis or vertical axis, but with the Westcott and Hort 19th century critical text on the x-axis. So it's something of a mirror image of the earlier chart. The New Revised Standard Version score is an agreement with Westcott and Ort 55.6% of the time. It's a little lower and to the right of the New Revised Standard Version on this chart. The third scatter plot has Robinson Pierpont on X and Westcott and Hort on Y. And here you see the New Revised Standard Version very close to the updated edition. The updated edition is a bit higher in terms of agreement with Westcott and Hort, and a bit to the left, less agreement with Robinson Pierpont. And for the final scatter plot, we have the Tyndall House Greek New Testament on the X or horizontal axis, Nestle Elan 28th edition on the Y or vertical axis, and the updated edition agrees with Tyndall House less than the 89 did and it agrees with the Nestle Elan 28th edition less than the New Revised Standard Version of 1989 did. So in summary, I think this is a very nice edition. It's a useful reader. It's not a reference Bible, so you lack that. And it doesn't have a concordance. But it does have um, decent maps, and it's very well printed. The only thing I think is a negative about it is the shiny paper. I prefer a matte surface when I'm reading. But printed extremely well, line matched, sewn binding, a nice opacity to the paper. You have these uh, colorful headings to the text that make reading easier. In terms of the translation, I really haven't come to a conclusion about whether the updated edition is really worthwhile. That is, whether if you have the 1989, you should rush out and buy a copy of the 2021 update. I still have to do some examination of various passages before I can develop an opinion on that question. Um, but still, this is a very nice edition, and uh, I think you would be pleased if you are an NRSV reader with it. Well, I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Thanks very much for watching.